Whatever the circumstances, if Jesus was alive, then he and his disciples face a serious problem. If Jesus was placed in the tomb and somehow was revived, he himself would certainly think that was an act of the grace of God. I came right to the bars of death and was brought back. But now there's a practical problem. It's a political problem, actually. Romans basically do one thing to messiahs. They crucify them. It is clear that either through resurrection or resuscitation, Jesus did survive the crucifixion. But he faces a problem. He's a condemned man. The Bible is said to solve this problem with a miracle called the Ascension. Jesus is taken bodily into heaven. But the original texts are even more confused when it comes to the Ascension than they were about the Resurrection. The Ascension does not actually appear in the original form of any of the Gospels. The Ascension references in Mark are among the verses which, as we have seen, were added 200 years after the events. There is one line in Luke which reads, and was carried up into heaven. But again, this doesn't appear in all Bibles. It was, in fact, inserted simply because the Ascension is referred to in a later book of the Bible, the Acts of the Apostles, and it's always been assumed that Luke was the author of Acts. There's no Ascension in Matthew, and John's Gospel ends with the enigmatic words, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. So what were the many other things that Jesus did? If the faithful knew that Jesus was in fact still alive, surely they would have shared that knowledge, and surely they must have hoped that at some time in the future it would have been safe for Jesus to return, and evidence for that hope should be somewhere in the original text. It is. The disciples were expecting Jesus to return, they were expecting what has become known as the Second Coming. But this was not necessarily going to be a miraculous return. Jesus definitely went away. Whatever view of resurrection you take, resuscitation or divine miracle, in the traditional sense of belief in resurrection, he goes away. He says, I'm going away. The disciples say, can we come? He says, no. And he says, I'm going to come again. Now what's interesting about that is normally if someone says they're going away and they're going to come back and you're sort of looking at your watch or your calendar wondering, okay, he said he went away, he's going to come back, you'd take it in that uh, everyday sense. The concept of a heavenly second coming with Jesus returning on the Day of Judgment was only created after it became clear that he had not returned in that everyday sense. That key Christian idea of the second coming, that, that Jesus having come once and died and risen from the dead will come again, is very much a distinctive Christian idea. It's, uh, Christianity borrows most of its ideas from Judaism, but this is one that it thought up on its own. If you look at the Messiah tradition in, in Judaism, and obviously when Jesus was around, the Jews were expecting their own Messiah. They were expecting him to come and sort everything out, and that would be an end to it. They weren't expecting him to come, half sort things out, die go off somewhere and then come back a bit later on. This, this, is, this is really, the second coming is, is, is one of the distinctive Christian ideas. But does the concept of a heavenly second coming ignore the very matter-of-fact nature of some of the references to it in the Bible? A lot of those references to Jesus coming back might in fact be taken more uh, in an everyday sense of someone going away to accomplish certain mission and then planning to return when that mission was accomplished. But if Jesus did leave Palestine, France still doesn't seem a likely destination. It was, after all, a Roman colony. Some claim that if Jesus did survive the crucifixion, his first priority would be to escape from the jurisdiction of the Roman Empire. You just look at a map. Palestine is on the a uh, far eastern border of the Roman Empire. If you go west, you're going right into the heart of Roman territory where we have our 15 legions stationed around the world. 
If you go east, you're crossing over into Parthia and you're going towards Persia eventually and India and Afghanistan, that direction. And if Jesus thought he was the Jewish Messiah, there was another reason why he might have traveled east. People forget that the Messiah's got to do essentially two things. Everyone remembers he's got to bring world peace and justice and defeat evil. That's all the way through the prophets. When the Messiah comes, he's the Prince of Peace. But the other huge task is he's got to gather all the scattered tribes of Israel back to the land of Israel. Now, this takes a bit of explaining, but it's not too complicated. The people we know today as the Jews are only one tribe, the tribe of Judah. And we have in the Hebrew Bible the story of ten of the tribes being taken away to the east, to the northeast, by the Assyrians in the 8th century BC. They become known in history as the Lost Tribes because nobody know exactly, knows exactly what happened to them. We do, though, we can speculate that if Jesus thought of himself as the Messiah, he might have had in mind, I've got to go and present myself to these uh, dispersed brothers and sisters off wherever they might be. The journey east from Israel in the first century was surprisingly easy by land or by sea on the Silk Route or the Spice Route. But if Jesus traveled or returned to the east, surely there would be legends like those in the south of France to support the idea. And of course, there are such traditions. In fact, the people here in Kashmir call their tribe Ben-e Israel and claim to be descendants of the lost tribes. And here there are stories that in the first century, Isa, known locally as Yusasaf, meaning leader of the healed, returned to Kashmir in his thirties. Yusasaf's ministry here can easily be seen as a continuation of the Jesus ministry. In a local temple called the Temple of Solomon, there used to be an inscription which told of Yusasaf's claim, made about 50 AD, to be Jesus, the prophet from Israel. Tamam Kashmir ki tarikhu mein yehi likha hai ki ye bahar se aaya hai, ye ye prophet tha, ye pagambar tha, aur Israel se aaya. Nasven se andar border mein aaya hai aur phir yahi tabligh kar raha hai aa raha hai wahi jeezas se wahi masih bhi hai kyunki yuz asaf ke maane hai jo kodi ke maraz mein hu unko shifa dene wala unka ilaj karne wala jo shifa yaab hui usko यूज़ असब के दूसरे मायने हैं कि यूज़ असब के दूसरे मायने हैं जमा करने वाला। यूज़ असब कंटिन्यू टू टीच एंड टू प्रीच इन कश्मीर अंटिल ही डाइड अराउंड द ईयर 80 एडी। ही वाज बेरिड इन श्रीनगर। एंड दिस राधर मॉडेस्ट बिल्डिंग इज़ दे से हिस टूम। the first shrine erected around the site was built in 112 AD. In fact, it is now a shared grave site. In the 15th century, the Islamic holy man Syed Nazir Ud Din was also buried here. Although both the gravestones under the cloth point north-south in the Islamic tradition, the body of Yus Asaf is buried beneath in a grave dug east-west in the Jewish tradition. But this is a sacred site, 
and short of exhumation, there is no way of discovering whether the body buried here is that of a man who once survived crucifixion. However, next to the sarcophagus are the carved footprints of Yus Asaf, and they do have marks or scars on them. अच्छी उम्र में ये फोट हो गया है और उसके पांवों के निशानात का पत्थर पर उन्होंने कुंडा कर रखे हैं जैसे कि थे वैसे ही रखे रखे हैं निशान के तौर पर उनमें जख्मों के निशानात बिल्कुल साफ नजर आते हैं जो सलीब पर चढ़ाने की वजह से उनके पांवों में जख्म जख्म आए थे The position of the scars just behind the toes, do not match each other. But they would align if a single nail was driven through both feet with the left foot placed on top of the right. There are many who believe this to be the tomb of Jesus. If this is the tomb of Jesus, then he spent most of his life in the mountain kingdom of Kashmir. He did not die on the cross. There was no resurrection. He did not ascend into heaven, and he does not sit at the right hand of God. For many Christians, this would be the end of Christianity as we know it. <laughs>